Hi, this is Dr. Analysis takes time and reflection. People must be lined up. Ideas need to be sorted through. Data needs to be collected, stored, retrieved, examined, and displayed. Calculating the analysis, writing the report, and presenting the finding, all of this takes time, and it should. All of this delays a decision maker's access to the final report. Often at the end of this grueling effort, analysis identifies need for further inquiry, and therefore it creates more delays for decision makers. Something should be done to speed up analysis. We do not advocate rushing through analysis, but at the same time, we re recognize that a late report is a wasted analysis. Timing matters. Policy makers and managers may have to decide without the full benefit of the analysis, and many do. This lecture focuses on how analysis could be made faster without sacrificing its quality. Clearly, doing a thoughtful analysis takes time. There is no point to hurry and produce a suboptimal analysis. But there are ways to complete, complete analysis faster and yet maintain the quality of the work. An examination of what takes time in the analysis process suggests places where one can speed up the work without affecting the quality of the report. What could we imagine? Analysis consisting of distinct phases, preparation, data collection, analysis of data, and presentation. In each of these phases, the analysis goes through distinct steps. For example, in preparation, the analyst finds relevant experts and identifies the decision makers, arranges the for contracts, and a mandate to start, coordinates a kickoff meeting to clarify purpose and scope of the analysis, designs studies, instruments, and survey forms, and gets IRB approval for data collection. Let's start with preparation phase, when we are just beginning. Getting it right from the beginning requires a great deal of preparation. Here are a few steps you can take to complete your analysis faster. Write final report at the start of the project. Use online databases to find relevant experts and get decision makers' ideas before the group meetings. One of the simplest steps an analyst can take to reduce time from start of the project, that's signing the contract, to the end of the project, is to do more thorough pl planning. In particular, it would be helpful to draft the final report, the introduction, the method sections, the results sections, with all related tables and appendices at start of the project. The introduction lays out the issues, and this can easily be done at start. The method section lays out the approach, and this too can be done at start, though it may need revisions later on. The more difficult section to write at start is the results section. Obviously, the data will not be available. Our approach here is to make up the data, case by case, based on expectations of what the data may look like. Then data are transformed to the appropriate tables and figures, and the result section is prepared. The important step is to actually present tables and figures from the hypothetical data. The discussion could wait, though some outline of the discussion could also be made at start. The process we are recommending allows you to start at the end. This exercise speeds up analysis in several ways. First, it communicates precisely to decision makers what the final result will look like. It reduces confusion and saves the time spent on clarifying the procedures of the analysis. Second, it clarifies to the analyst what data are needed and identifies the source of the data. Third, it reduces time needed to prepare the final report as it allows revisions to be done as actual data collection and analysis proceeds. So when it comes to preparing the final report, a good draft is at hand. A good example of drafting the report before the data is available is the process of generating automatic, automatic content on the web. The text of the report is prepared ahead of the data collection, and portions of the report that depend on specific data are left as a variable to be read from the database. When the data are, are available, the final report is generated automatically. Another step is to search for external experts that understand the situation clearly and do not require additional time to orient themselves. 
As you have noticed, a large portion of decision analysis is often done by relying on experts' opinions. They are key in many analyses. On any topic, there are numerous experts available. Finding the right expert is difficult, but important in saving time and gaining access to resources that only the expert has access to. Automated methods of finding experts in a particular topic are widely available. One such tool is the Medline database. One could search a topic in Medline and find the authors who have published in the area. Most articles include contact information for the author. In this fashion, one could quickly put together a list of experts on a topic, no matter how minutely the topic is defined. For example, suppose the analyst needs to examine merger between two hospitals. First, Medline is searched for the For each article identified in Medline, there is also a list of authors and their affiliations. Thus, the database can be used to identify a preliminary list of experts in the field. Note that online databases provide the contact information for the key authors. This contact information can also be checked against other online information so that better and more complete information about the expert is available. Another step that can, that can speed up presentation is to meet individually with decision makers, even before the full kickoff meeting. Individual meetings are easier to arrange and require less coordination. Furthermore, individual meetings facilitate later larger face-to-face -face meetings. They ensure that there are no surprises. If it is difficult to meet each person individually, use telephones and emails to understand the thinking of various people before the meeting. It would help if you select or design the data collection tool as early as possible. One of the common reasons data collection is delayed is because the application for institutional review board for data collection is pending. No one sets out to collect data that they do not need, but many do so. When you compare data used in reports and data collected, there is a great deal of difference between the two. Much data are collected but not reported. Some of this discrepancy belongs to the fact that one cannot anticipate the results of data collection. Occasionally one collects data only to find that the findings do not merit reporting of the data. But sometimes, one can anticipate data that do not merit reporting and at the start of the study, and therefore one could reduce the data collection burden. Some collect more demographics about their patients than they need to or will likely report. Others use standardized tools that collect data about various topics, one of which is of direct interest to the organization, but many components of which may be discarded. When collecting more data than needed, many waste time and resources. Unfortunately, the time and resources wasted are not directly experienced by the survey designer. He or she is often not the person who responds, nor the person who collects the data, and sometimes even not the person who analyzes the data. Not surprisingly, the designers of surveys are not sensitive to time pressures involved in collecting and analyzing data. But if we take a larger perspective, if we take the organization's perspective, the value of short surveys and quick data collections become more apparent. In other words, short surveys will collect less data, have better response rate, and waste less of organization resources. But the analyst needs to think through the various data needs more carefully, making sure the data collected will be reported. I have already mentioned how preparing the final report ahead of time reduces the amount of data collected as many pieces of data do not make their way to the report or drop from the data collection plans. In addition, the analyst may wish to go through each question to verify not the response may be interesting, but that the response will be pivotal in a particular decision. If the findings are not directly related to a specific decision, then the analyst may want to drop the item from the data collection effort. 
data collection can be made faster if various preliminary steps for data collection are taken before it's clear what data should be collected. The analyst approaches employees close to the process and alerts them that the team plans to ask them a few questions. The exact nature of the question is not clear, but the procedure used to send the question to them and collect the question is explained and perhaps even practiced. Employees' consent to respond is collected and the importance of timely response is emphasized. When the need for the data becomes clear, the analyst broadcasts the question to all who have given consent, usually through a telephone message or an email, and within a few hours collects the response. For example, suppose we want to know about changes in demand for our cardiovascular services. Clinicians within the hospital are approached and asked if to participate when a specific question is emailed to them. Consent is obtained and once every six months a practice run is made. Then when the decision makers have a specific question, the network is used to obtain the, re the actual responses. For example, if decision makers want to know if demand for their cardiovascular services is changing, the analyst emails participating clinicians at a hospital to count the time between two cardiovascular patients admitted to their unit. Within hours, the response is collected and the analysis is provided. Of course, much time and effort goes into maintaining networks of informants and consents, uh, but the result is spectacular. Data are made available when the policymaker needs it. One way to reduce data collection burden is to reduce the number of patients surveyed through sampling. A representative sample allows the analyst to infer the population characteristic from the average of the sample. The larger the number of people surveyed, typically the longer the time for completion of the analysis. Sometimes months can be cut out of data collection by reducing the sample of people surveyed. Some decision makers are not familiar with sampling procedures and therefore miss the advantage of these techniques. They may insist on surveying every patient about their satisfaction when only a sample will do. An analyst should work with decision maker to highlight the importance of sampling and how it will reflect the population characteristics. Decision makers who are uncomfortable about sampling should be reminded that when sensitivity analysis shows that the datum plays an important role in the conclusion of the analysis, additional data will be collected then. There are at least two ways that sampling can be made more efficient. One way to make sampling more efficient is to start with a small group of people and if unexpected results are obtained, expand the sample to a larger group of people. First, a small sample is drawn. If it leads to clear, unequivocal conclusions, then no more data is collected. If the results are ambiguous, then a larger sample is drawn. Thus, for example, one may agree to sample 20 representative patients about their satisfaction with the new un unit's pr clinic processes. If less than 5% are dissatisfied, then no more samples are drawn. If more than 5% of the respondents are dissatisfied, then a larger sample of 50 patients is drawn. These methods of two-stage sampling save the number of patients that need to be contacted and thus reduce the time it takes to collect the information. Another method of reducing data collection burden is to shift from sampling the event to measuring time to the event. If an analyst needs to collect information about a phenomenon that's rare, he or she needs to collect large samples of data in order to measure the frequency of the event. For example, if the analyst needs to estimate the probability of wrong site surgery, many patients need to be reviewed before sufficient number of wrong site surgeries are identified to accurately measure this probability. An alternative is to calculate the probability of the event from time between recurrences of the event. For example, one can radically reduce the number of patients examined by looking at time between two wrong side surgeries. When the analyst collects data, he or she is observing the frequency of a target event. In the absence of conflicts of interest, there are no reasons to expect that the analyst is a better observer of the event than other who are more familiar with the process. In fact, one would expect that an expert familiar with the process or an employee engaged in the process may know more about what to observe, when to pay attention, how to define the target event than an analyst who is typically new to the process. 
For this reason, whenever possible, we prefer the analyst to rely on observations of others, as opposed to setting up his or her own data collection. Numerical data obtained from experts or employees' observation of a process is often referred to as subjective data. When the analyst observes the same process and calculates the same data, it's sometimes referred to as objective. These two labels are unfortunate, as they imply that one is more accurate than the other. Note that by subjective data, it is not meant the likes and dislikes of a person, which is, after all, idiosyncratic and perhaps unreliable. By subjective data, in this context, we mean relying on observations of experts and others more familiar with the process. Thus, a nurse saying that the patient's satisfaction has improved is based on the nurse's observation of the frequency of the patient's complaint, not on his or her likes and dislikes. Both subjective and objective data are suspect. Subjective opinions are distrusted when the estimator has a vested interest. The event estimated is not observed frequently by the estimator. The question asked is different from typical questions faced by the estimator. The estimator has limited expertise in the area. Only one person's judgment is relied on or sought. And tools typically available, for example, calculator and various reports, are not made available to the estimator. And finally, estimators is not trained in estimation process. Objective estimates, at the same time, are also distrusted when the target event is poorly defined. Over a long data collection period, the target event changes in nature. Uh, when data collection procedures are not kept consistent over time, and when frequent data entry errors occur, and important nuances and exceptions are not accounted for. But if subjective opinions can be measured accurately, meaning at a minimum, reliance on a consensus opinion from experts in the field, answering questions that, are that they are familiar with, and using tools that they typically have access to, then subjective data can be as accurate as objective ones and can radically reduce the data collection burden. To speed up analysis, the analyst puts together procedures for cleaning the data even before the data is available. At the most simplest level, the analyst prepares reports of distributions and ranges of every variable. Such reports can then be examined to see if there are unusual entries. A computer program can then be prepared that will run various tests on the data to make sure the responses are within range, for example, no one with negative age, and not conflicting with each other, for example, no pregnant males. The computer can examine patterns of missing information and their reasons. There are reasons like the question was not appropriate, data was not available, or data available but the client refused to provide it, and so on. The computer can examine patterns of data entry in previous cases to see if there is an unusual deviation from the pattern. This is the typical do done by calculating the mean of data items entered in previous cases and testing if the current data is more than three standard deviations away from the mean. To assure integrity and accuracy of the data, the computer can select a random number of cases for re-entry. The point is that procedures for cleaning the data can be automated as far as possible so that when data is available, the analyst can rapidly proceed. Some of these procedures can be even made part of online or automated data collection procedures. Another alternative that has been made possible because of growth of web services is to allow reports to be generated from data automatically. First, the analyst drafts the report with all variables in the report linked to a database. Then the analyst prepares a data collection procedure and populates the database. Third, the computer cleans the data and generates the report. This figure shows these steps for a site we maintain on personal improvement. First, we prepare the web page where the text of the report is prepared dynamically later when the data is supplied. Here you see the sample text and the variable that will supply the data and complete the sentence.
clients who complete their personal improvement report their success and failure on the web. The data are collected by the computer, clean and stored in a web-based database. Here you see how clients can answer a question on the web when data are available and then the report is generated. The report is available instantaneously after the data is collected. The variable in previous sentences are replaced with data and report is made ready. Many decision makers are busy. To arrange for their time, make an appointment many months in advance. If a presentation date is set, it will create pressure to produce the findings on time. In addition, if the project falls behind schedule, then additional resources can be brought to task in order to accomplish the project on time and present as planned. A useful tool is to calculate backward from presentation date and see what tasks are critical for the presentation and which tasks have slack and are not critical. A software such as Microsoft Project Management software can help identify the critical paths so that the project can finish on time. When a date is set for presentation, the decision maker is more aware of the report and may delay deciding on the decision until the report becomes available. Waiting is always made easier if it's clear when the wait will be over. Even though a joint meeting is coming up, it's important to present to each decision maker separately and get their input so that the analysis can be revised in time for the meeting. Research shows that obtaining a decision maker's input individually before the group meeting is important in having a successful meeting. If you want a carefree meeting, get the input ahead of time and respond to the comments in non-defensive and constructive ways. Then there will be no surprises at the final presentation meeting. In the rush to end an analysis on time, do not forget to assess client satisfaction with the process and to prepare appropriate documentation of the analysis. These steps take time, but cutting these steps out will come to haunt the analyst. In contrast, learning what worked and what needs improvement can help the analyst in the future. Furthermore, detailed documentation and reporting can give the analysis a life of its own. As decision makers come and go, the availability of the documents will help them understand why and how the decision was made. Some of these techniques may seem pedantic. Could we really save so much time if we reduce the data collected by one case? Other techniques may be inappropriate in some settings. For example, why rely on subjective judgments when the experts disagree on the issue? Whether these techniques work and when they are effective in speeding up analysis have not been demonstrated empirically. It's not clear, for example, how much time will be saved if all recommendations were followed. The methods of speeding up analysis are in their infancy and much work and investigation is needed to make sure that they are effective. Consider manufacturing in the last century. When Ford implemented industrial engineering time and motion studies to reduce the time it took to create cars, the entire industry changed. Cost of car productions dropped and new consumers came to market. The automobile, which was previously handcrafted, was suddenly mass-produced. A time and motion study can do the same for decision analysis. Sure, it's unique product, but the steps in completing decision analysis are well known and can be speeded up. You have seen some of the ideas for speeding up analysis. If rapid analysis is possible, if the time drops from months to days, then decision analysis will be more readily available. Naturally, the market for analysis and evidence-based decision making 
Many of the ideas presented here require the analyst to spend more time thinking through the analysis. In a way, we are trading the analyst's planning time against the organization's time for collecting data or the decision maker's waiting time. Sure, well-planned efforts take less time to execute than they do take more time to plan for. It may be naive to think that the analyst has the extra time to spend on planning. Because the person who plans the analysis, the person who executes it, and the person who receives it may be different. Rapid analysis is a burden for one person and a nirvana for another. If organizations want to produce rapid analysis, they need to set the right incentives for all parties involved. So what's the take-home lesson? Rapid analysis requires more planning but can be done.